Hi, I'm Dr. Denise, and on this video, we're going to learn more about how to calculate the heart rate on ECGs of dogs and cats. So every single ECG should have some important markings, even if it's computer-based or paper-based. So uh, you might see the first marking as the calibration mark, which indicates how, what is the sensitivity of the paper, in this case, the sensitivity of the equipment detecting the electricity from the heart. Here, we see a marking of one millivolt, which is 10, in this case, 10 millimeters, 10 little boxes that makes to show that it's one millivolt in amplitude. Sensitivities can be twice as big or half of this, according to how big is the QRS complexes on the ECG. Next, you should look for the leads that have been captured on that ECG. In this case, we see the markings for lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. So these will be the six frontal axes of the ECG. Next, you want to check the paper speed. The paper speed is very important for you to calculate the heart rate. So in this specific ECG, we see at 25 millimeters per second paper speed. And we can now see also the filters that were used, in this case, the 40 millihertz filter. And again, this is the sensitivity of 10 millimeters per millivolt. Finally, you'll be able to see, depending on the equipment, a longer trace for lead two. That happens because lead two is the one that we normally use to search for arrhythmias. So by having a longer trace, it helps us better characterize the ECG trace. Now, in terms of paper speeds, in small animals, there are two main types of paper speed that we use. Even if you don't actually have a paper-based ECG, even if it's just computer-based, these are the traditional speeds that we use. One is at 25 millimeters per second, and one at 50 millimeters per second. In reality, the difference is that the 50 millimeters per second spreads the ECG across a larger area. That will make it easier for you to read, specifically make specific measurements of the width of the waves on the ECG. But it's very common for us to use 25 millimeters per second on traces of dogs and cats. So let's take a closer look on this specific trace. So if you know that the speed is 25 millimeters per second, and you know that every single little marking here or these little dots that makes these little squares are one, it's one millimeter each. Then if you count 25 of those tiny ones, you should have one second. To make your life easier, you can count in bunches of five in this case. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25 little boxes. So in 25 little one, little boxes or 25 millimeters, you have one second. Now, you want to calculate more than the heart rate more than from one single second. So in this case, we can calculate for three seconds. So that's now it's easy. You just count the number of R waves from the QRS complexes. In this case, we have five. So we have five beats in three seconds. Remember, the heart rate is calculating beats per minute. So you want to provide the final number in 60 seconds or one minute. So if you have five beats in three seconds, you would have 50 beats in 30 seconds, which is half a minute. So then the heart rate in this case is 100 beats per minute. Now, it is recommended for you to get the heart rate, the, the average heart rate from a larger, longer trace of ECG. So in that case, we will try to get at least six seconds of ECG if possible. So in this case, the paper speed is at 25 millimeters per second. And again, we're gonna count the boxes we see if we can count six seconds. So here we have 25 millimeters, again, two seconds, three, four, five, and six. 
Now we look for the R waves of the QRS complexes. Here we are. We identify each one of them. Note that we barely missed the last one on this ECG trace. We'll get back to that in a second. So then in this case, you had eight beats in six seconds, but we went to reporting 60 seconds, which is a minute. So no brainer, you multiply by 10. Here it is, 80 beats in 60 seconds, 80 beats per minute. So the beauty of using 25 millimeters per second and counting for the enough for six seconds is that you can just multiply by 10. Now, remember that I mentioned that we barely miss the last QRS complex. So that's important because depending on where you start and where you end, you might get a different heart rate. So here, for example, I started on the arbitrarily on this box. If I shift to the next one like this, but I keep everything consistent, now I still have six seconds, but now I'm capturing the last beat. So instead of 80 beats per minute, now I have 90 beats per minute because I'm capturing one more. So which one is correct, 80 or 90? It depends, both are correct. The heart rate is varying. It ranges from 80 to 90. But again, the little rule still applies where I can just count the number of beats in six seconds and multiply by 10. Now, if you're presented with an ECG at 50 millimeters per second, keep in mind the ECG is spread across a longer trace, a longer space of the paper. So then you're gonna have to multiply by twice as much the number. So here we have four beats and I, count, I counted 25 millimeters, but now 25 millimeters is not one second anymore, it's half of it because the paper is twice as fast. So actually, 50 millimeters you make one second. So I, then I try to count as many as I can. So in this case, I have just three seconds. So in this case, three seconds, I got four beats. So then I will have 40 beats in 30 seconds and 80 beats per minute. So you see now that here we are multiplying by 20 instead of multiplying by 10 because the speed is twice as fast. So to recap, if we have five centimeters of ECG, we have two seconds of time in those five centimeters if the paper speed is at 25 millimeters per second. If it's twice as fast at 50, we only have one second of time in five centimeters. Then we want to have at least six seconds for 25 millimeters per second paper speed. So that will be 15 centimeters. And we can find different objects around us that are 15 centimeters long. For example, a big pen. So a big pen is exactly 15 centimeters with the cap. So then if you just put a big pen on top of the ECG, a paper-based ECG, and you just count the number of beats, you should be able to find the heart rate. If it's at 25, you multiply by 10, if at 50 millimeters per second, you multiply by 20. It's important to remind us there are several other ways to calculate the heart rate. This is not the only way. I'm gonna show you two other ways that you can do, okay? Uh, before I forget, some paper base, some paper strips of ECG already have pre-prepared markings on the edge of the paper that help you identify 25 millimeters. So these are 25 millimeters, and here will be 50 millimeters from these two large markings. Again, you, you still have to look into the paper speed to be able to make the correct calculations. Now, if we want to calculate the instantaneous heart rate, which is the exact heart rate from one beat to the next one, instead of the average heart rate, we need, we need to zoom in on the tiny little boxes of the ECG and to understand what is the time that passes in each tiny box. So in this case, if the paper is at 50 millimeters per second, then you divide 60 seconds by 50 millimeters and you get a 0 0.02 second of time between this tiny, this in one millimeter of paper 
running out of the machine. Now, if the paper speed is at 25 millimeters per second, each little box is 0 0.04 seconds. 0 0.04 seconds. Why these numbers matter? Because if you want to calculate the heart rate between, let's say, this specific interval between the two RR waves, then using those numbers will help you. Let's see how we will do it. So you can count the number of boxes, tiny little boxes between one R wave and the next one. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 boxes, exactly 10 boxes between these two beats. So then if you know that each tiny little box, it's 0 0.04 seconds, because I know the paper speed is 25 millimeters per second, I just multiply 10 little boxes by 0 0.0 second of each box, you give me the amount of time that has passed between one beat and the next one. Because I want the heart rate in beats per minute, I get 60 seconds and divide by the amount of time that has passed from one beat to the next one, which is 0 0.04. That will give me the instantaneous heart rate and that specific beat between those two beats. Now, in this ECG, the heart rate speeds up. So we can see now here that we have half of the amount of boxes compared to the first one. Now we have five little boxes between one R wave and the next one. So in this case, we multiply 0 0.04, which is each little box, we multiply by 0.5, which is equals to 0.2 seconds. And then we divide 60 by 0.2 seconds to get the instantaneous heart rate of 300 beats per minute. Now, another option you can have to calculate instantaneous heart rate is to memorize specific numbers associated with each interval of the paper. So five little boxes or one big box of the paper, it's equals to an instantaneous heart rate of 300 beats per minute. So if you had a one beat right in the beginning of one, one uh, beginning of this interval here, and the next beat is right here, space it out by five little boxes, the instantaneous heart rate would be 300. Now, if you have two boxes, it would be 150. If you have three boxes, it would be 100. Four boxes, 75. Five boxes, 60. Six boxes, 50. And seven boxes, 43. So if you can memorize the order of these numbers that I listed here, which is used even in human medicine, then you should be able to calculate instantaneous heart rate. Let's put this in practice. So in this ECG from a dog, I mark the first two RR interval, uh, RR waves, which makes the first RR interval. And you can see here, they are a little bit wider than three boxes. So I highlighted three boxes here. So if they were perfectly aligned with three boxes, the heart rate would be 100 beats per minute. So in this case, it's probably a little less than that. Now, if you look on the, this part of the ECG, it's much wider because the high rate slow down. We have approximately six boxes. You can count like one, two, three, four, five, and then there's half here and half in the beginning. So approximately six boxes. So the, the heart rate in this case would be around 50 beats per minute. This way you can calculate the instantaneous heart rate, but the average heart rate will not be necessarily the average of these two. In this case, if we do our standard six seconds calculation, you would see that we would find eight beats in six seconds and therefore 80 beats per minute, okay? So the take home message here is that different methods will give you different results. It's important for you to know more than one, one method because depending on, on the situation you're at, you might not have enough time or not enough ECG to have six seconds, for example, to read an ECG. So this concludes this video and I have posted here some other resources available online if you want to read more about how to calculate the heart rate on ECGs. Thank you very much and I see you next time.